Hello and welcome. This uh, demonstration will be for OSPF in a single area. Obviously I'm using Packet Tracer here. have three routers here with networks between them which have 30-bit uh, masks. 30-bit uh, masks here on each of these. So that means that we're going to have to use our wildcard masks when we do uh, our configuration in OSPF. It, it's going to use wildcard masks. The destination networks are all 24-bit masks, so we'll get practice with that. Also, uh, OSPF is a link state protocol. Uh, it doesn't use TCP IP. It uses its own protocol in order to uh, communicate among the routers. Uh, the, there is a topology a map of the network on each router whenever they're in full convergence. It rapidly reconverges, finds loop-free uh, paths to the destination. So with that, let us uh, go ahead and get started on this thing and do some configurations. Okay, let's start over here with PC0. We'll open it up and run through the terminal. I've already connected the terminal uh, lines, the, the console lines, to the uh, RS-232 uh, ports on the uh, PCs. So the first thing we need to do is go to enable mode. What I like to do first is show IP route. This gives me the information that I need in order to determine what I'm going to advertise on my uh, interfaces. In this case, we have the 192.168.1 network and it has a 30-bit mask. The dot two network with a 30-bit mask and the then the uh, 2.0 network here with a 24-bit mask. So we can now go into this thing, the 222.2.2.0, and uh, go into the configure mode, and then we're going to go into router OSPF, and we have to give it a process ID. Doesn't matter what the process ID is, doesn't have to be the same on all the routers, can be different on each router. So let's give this an OSPF1 and then we're going to advertise our networks and the first one we'll advertise is 192.168.1.0 with a 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.3 uh, quick and simple way to determine what the wildcard mask is is to subtract the subnet mask from 255.255.255.255 and if we did that with the 255.255.255.252 we'd get the 0 .0 0.0.0.3 the next thing that we have to give this thing and we can give, use the help screen is tell it which area it is. And the first area of OSPF has to be the backbone area. We have to have an area of zero before we can have anything else. And this one is about a single area network, so that single area must be area zero. So we've advertised the one network, now we can advertise our two network has the same subnet mask. So 192.168.2.0 with the 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.3 uh, wildcard mask. The next network that we're going to do, and let me wipe this out because it's going to be a little bit different here, it's going to be 222.2.2.0 with a 0.0.0.255 because it has a 24-bit subnet mask and it also is going to be area 0. So with that that should take care of the configurations on this router using PC0. The next one, let's go to, I'm going to keep these in order even though they don't show up in order here, let's go to PC1, go to the desktop, the terminal, the 9600 bits, 
eight data bits, no parity, one stop bit, and no flow control. We can do the same thing here, show IP route, and it's going to again give us the directly connected networks. The only thing a router really knows about is the directly connected networks and what it's doing in these uh, dynamic routing protocols is advertising to the world that this network is attached to this router. So we can go into the config T router OS PF and let's use two just to show that we can use a different process ID for these things. And then we're going to go to network well, we got 192.168.0.0.192.168.0.0 and again it's got a 30-bit mask it also has to have an area area 0 has to be the first one the next one is the 2 network dot 2 dot 0 area 0 and then we're going to advertise network I know we just got an adjacency here. Uh, so let's advertise network 199.23.24.0 with a 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.255. Dot dot and again, it will be an area 0. The reason we have to advertise the links between the routers, the links between the routers here, uh, is the 192.168.0 these guys with the 30-bit mask is when we advertise these things it activates the protocol on those interfaces and allows it to do the communication uh, we now need to go to let's go to PC2 which should be our last one go back to the terminal again 9600 bits 8 data bits no parity 1 stop bit and flow control none. Go back in here and do the same thing. Show IP route which is going to again tell us what we're going to be able to uh, advertise. So we'll go into the configure mode router OSPF and let's use a different one OSPF3 different process ID network we got 83 dot zero dot zero dot zero with a zero dot zero dot zero dot two five five and it is going to be area zero area space zero got to get the uh, syntax right network one nine two dot one six eight dot well, we got zero dot zero with a zero dot zero dot zero dot three area zero and then adjacency is formed and then we're going to have the what 1.0 network but we've got to get it in the right place don't we 1.0 network up arrow key helps an awful lot with these things so if I do a show IP route now we have routes and we just finished the last adjacency because these things should have adjacencies to everything so if we show IP OSPF neighbor we should be able to uh, see who's connected to let's try that again show IP OSPF I guess if I spelled it right neighbor and the tab key one of the things that I tell myself and then I don't listen to myself is if I use the tab key and it doesn't work then I've typed something wrong so the neighbor we have uh, these things connected we have neighbors and we have full uh, 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 the state is full so we we're, we're have a full communication going to these other uh, these other uh, networks that we're trying to get to the 222 and the 199 networks guess the way to try these out is let's go see if we can go from one to the other I'm doing this so that I can see where we're going to go 23 24.2 23.24.2 what is that a 199 
and let's see if we can go to 222, 222.2.2.2. .2 so let's go into this guy. We'll turn off the console and go into the command prompt and see if we can. Let's try trace route. Tracer T to 222.2.2.2. So we get to the 2.1 and hanging on and hoping and waiting to see if we can actually get there. Okay, we finally did get there and you'll, you'll notice the jump. I went back. I had the uh, default gateway configured improperly on the other one so it wasn't able to get back from the 222.2. .2. But now that I have that, we should be able to get there back and forth very quickly. So we can go across the network. Our OSPF routes are working. Uh, one of the things that OSPF allows us to do is converge networks very quickly. This one goes from the uh, 199.23.24.1 to 2.192.168.2.1 and then directly to the other one. So 192.168.2.2, 2.1, go from one to the other. If I should go in here and shut down serial 01, let's give that one a shot. So let's go into uh, the command line here and let's see let's go to got to type interface serial zero one right and we'll do a shutdown on it we've lost our adjacencies and we should be shut down and it is so let's go back to this guy and see if we can go a different route. So it has instantly converged. We're going a different location. We're going to the 1.2, the 0 0.1, and the 1.2. You can see that the uh, you can see here that the routes are different. Converges very quickly to allow us to have a network that is uh, very tolerant. Uh, very very quick in doing the reconvergence. That's all that there really is to uh, configuring a single area OSPF network. They work very well very quickly and with that I would hope that this has been useful and would like to thank you for watching.